Welcome back and many thanks for staying with us right here on NTV at 1. Over a week ago, parliamentarians revealed a proposal to place what they called a $10 tourism development levy. The levy charged on all outgoing tourists would help rebuild the shuttered tourism sector whose vibrancy was affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. To help us understand what is happening here, we do have Amos Wekesa, the CEO of Great Great Lake Safaris and also Uganda Lodges Limited. Welcome to NTV at 1. Thank you for hosting me, NTV. This looks like a move to improve the tourism sector. Will it work, Amos? Uh, I don't think so. I think a lot of people have tagged me in this discussion about the $10 <laughs> thing. Indeed. What I've realized is that Ugandans don't know that we already had a levy I see. or taxes on every ticket that, that you buy out of How Uganda. So? Uh, in every ticket you buy out of Uganda, you have $57. Mm. $7 goes to URA, $10 goes to uh, security at the airport, mm. and $40 for handling. So when you go to the airport and they're serving you, you have already paid for the service. Mm. Now, if you go to Kenya, Kenya charges you another $50. Already in a ticket between Entebbe to Nairobi, which is a 55 minutes, yeah. taxes alone mm. is $107. Mm. Now, if you add another $10 levy, mm. you are starting, the airline starts calculating its fares mm. from $117, which mm. makes it extremely very, very expensive. Now, internally, I had proposed to our president and president of Kenya last uh, 2019 mm. that the, domestic, the flights between Uganda and Kenya, flights between Uganda and Tanzania, mm. should be regarded as domestic flights, such mm. that there's a lot of movement to increase business and tourism within the region. I see. Are there any simpler protocols we could expedite to ensure safe travel while also handling uh, and curtailing the spread and also the contraction of COVID-19? What is the situation at our airport in Tebe? I understand you just flew in from Kenya. Yeah, I was in Nairobi. I just came in this morning. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> the, s the reality is that normally the president in engages private sector into mm. these discussions. But the prime minister who has been given responsibility has mm. not engaged properly the, prime the, the private sector. Mm. Because normally you need the health people, you need the political class, and then the private sector. Because the country cannot survive without engaging the private sector. And so they were excluded, six lab, uh, labs? No, I'm talking about okay. private sector as in tourism, people who are actually yeah. bringing in foreign business. All right. How are we going to bring in foreign business? No country in the world that survives without an external strategy. I, I can tell you that in, so in Uganda here, for mm. example, South Africa has 78 companies operating in this country, taking half a million, ha half a billion dollars Indeed. to South Africa. Kenya has banks here. Have they closed during COVID? No. For us, we have no kiosks in Kenya. We, are, we own nothing, mm -hmm. you know? How do, we how do we close out the business mm. that is coming uh, where other uh, guys are making money mm. from us? Is the testing at the airport leading to more cancellations of our business? On Friday, I tested, mm. uh, for, I tested for COVID. Yes, Amos. And then we went to Kenya. When we reached Kenya, because we had a certificate, mm. Kenya simply just took our code bars, our bar bar codes, mm. and they were allowed into Kenya. When we came back, of course, I had done, uh, um, had done uh, the jobs as Amos, and at the same time, I also had I was still in the 72 hours. I see. Now, the new rules are in, in, in introducing right now. If I have flown from the U.S., mm. 40 hours, 30 hours, I arrive in Tebe, I have done already, I have a PCR for 72 hours. Yes, Amos. I have uh, a job. Mm. And then you want, I have arrived with KLM at 11 in the night. And then you want to put something in my nose when Kenya is not willing to do the same. I personally believe that the Prime Minister right now should go to Kenya, go to Tanzania, and see exactly so what our competition so is doing. So, in a nutshell, these interventions are not called for in the wake of this COVID-19 pandemic as the tourism sector continues to get battered by COVID-19. So, <laughs> if you have three questions you would put to the government yes. or recommendations, what would they be? I personally would think that, yes, mm. we need to make sure that everybody coming through the airport has right. been jabbed. Mm. Number two, we need to make sure they have at least tested 72 hours before they arrive in Tebe. And they should also be traveling with a designated or uh, tour operator, for example. Yeah. After they have that, let them be allowed, like Kenya is doing, you mm. know. We should be doing what our competition, we're not working in isolation as a country. Mm. We are competing with other countries. We should be able to observe what other countries are doing. Why, why is this right now? We are all, all we're doing now is discussing about consolations. Mm. Even now I can show you evidence of, I, of I, discussion. I, I, Every client is trying to cancel coming to Uganda. So Amos Wekesa, the CEO of Great Lake Safaris and Uganda Lodges Limited, thank you very much for having made the time to speak to us. Thank you we so much. I'll call on you on Morning at NTV to expand more. Of yeah. course, you're still watching NTV at one away from the local side of the news. International news is also in the offing. Take a look.